Hello there, my name is Ollie. this is Economics Unlocked, and today we're going to take a super quick look at what happens when countries print new money. We've also got some bonus content at the end. Now, you might hear on the news in tough economic times that the US or the UK have added so many millions of new money into the economy. But how does this actually work? First up, can anyone do it? Well, in an economy with multiple banks, commercial banks can increase the money supply through loans. I'll be doing another video on that soon, but today we're just going to look at what happens with central banks. So in the US, that's the Federal Reserve, in the UK, that's the Bank of England, and for countries in the Euro, it's the European Central Bank. In each country, these are the only places that can create new money, and we'll get onto why they might do this in a minute. Right now though, what actually happens to this money, and who gets it? Well firstly, it's rare that anything is actually printed. Most of the time, the money is just added to the central bank's spreadsheets on a computer. But what happens to it? Well, it's all part of a process called quantitative easing, often called asset purchasing in the UK. What happens is the central bank uses the money it's just created to buy assets from large commercial banks. These are financial assets, like bonds. What's a bond? Well, it's a sort of IOU from a company or a government that has certain conditions attached to it. But basically, it's one of the ways companies and governments can borrow money. The central bank will buy these bonds off commercial banks. What that means is instead of a pile of IOUs, the commercial banks now have a whole load of cash. So while bonds can be hard to sell in tough economic times, cash is very useful to the commercial banks. Now the commercial banks have a whole load of cash and the banks can use that immediately to lend money to people or businesses and to buy more bonds. That means that when the economy is slowing down, central banks can use this method to get commercial banks to lend more money out to people and get the economy moving again. Another advantage is that when the central bank buys government bonds, it drives up the price of these bonds and makes them less attractive to other investors who might want to buy them. This is good, because when the economy is in a bad way, investors usually want to buy government bonds because they are considered to be very safe. But if government bonds are very expensive, then they are forced to buy other, more risky bonds, and this helps get the economy going as well. So all round, it seems like a pretty decent result. The central bank pumps money into the economy and this gets it moving again. But why don't they do this all the time? The first trade-off is with inflation. There's more on this in the bonus content at the end, but to put it simply, it can be said that there are two main types of inflation, cost push and demand pull. Now, when there's more money being lent out to people in the economy, that gives people access to more cash to spend. And this extra spending increases demand for goods and services. And this can cause inflation. Now that's okay when the economy is slowing down, because usually you're worried about deflation, which is the opposite to inflation, and deflation is much worse than inflation. But it does mean that you can't do this all the time. Otherwise, you'll get lots and lots of inflation, and that can cause its own problems for the economy. So ultimately, the central banks have to be very careful as to when they create this new money and how much money they create. There's also another issue with asset purchasing. It doesn't always work. Even if you create lots of money, in tough times, commercial banks may decide just to sit on the money they've received and not to do anything with it because they're worried about making a loss. It can be argued that this happened after 2008. Since then, banks in the US, UK and Europe have created billions in new money and it still hasn't made much difference. So either there's a massive time lag with the policy or it simply hasn't worked. Now I did promise you some bonus content and here it is. When I talked about inflation earlier, I mentioned cost push and demand pull. Well, there's another more complex way to look at it and it involves the quantity theory of money. An economist called Fisher came up with an equation MV equals PT which means that the money supply times by the velocity that money is circulating around the economy equals the price level times by the number of transactions in the economy. Now, if we assume that the number of transactions in an economy doesn't change, that's a pretty big assumption, but let's roll with it, then if the central bank pumps money into the economy, they increase the money supply, and to an extent, they also increase the velocity that it's circulating around the economy. Now, in order for the equation to balance, something on the other side must therefore also increase. And if the number of transactions doesn't change, then the price level must go up. What does that mean? Well, if the price level is going up, that's inflation. So in short, creating new money causes inflation. And now, you not only know how printing money works, but you also know a little bit about the quantity theory of money. That's it for this one, guys. Don't miss out on subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. You can also follow us on Instagram with a link in the description below. 
Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.